This is part 5 of the short course on event history analysis. It will deal with important conceptual issues in relation to handling time, migration and censoring. We will explain here why it is important to get precise information on the following. What is the time criterion for residence? We will see that it is directly related to the definition of migration in and out of the study area. Second, internal moves, that is within an HDSS, also have to be properly monitored. Lastly, it is necessary to define what is the date at which we consider that the observation is ending, that is, the end observation date. It is also called the right censoring date. What is the time threshold used for anyone to be an eligible resident in the study area? This is absolutely crucial that you check the time criterion for residence, whatever the longitudinal data at hand, be it retrospective, cohort study, panel data or registered data. So for example, in an HDSS, what was the minimum time of stay in the HDSS to be considered a resident? The question is also valid the other way around. What is the minimum of time staying outside the HDSS to be excluded from the resident population? For that, you need to check the instructions given to the field workers and supervisors. What is the criterion on the field and is it respected by field workers? Also, make a clear distinction between the criterion for residents and the attachment of the migrants to their household of origin. One migrant may stay years out of the HDSS, just spending holiday time and intermittent visits to the HDSS, and be attached to a household as a family member. The migrant could send remittances, for example. This time of residence criterion defines migration in and out of the HDSS. The migration is therefore a combination of spatial and time criteria. The spatial criterion defines the study area limits. These limits are partly arbitrary. In principle, the borders of an HDSS delimit a homogeneous space from the social and economic point of view. The temporal criterion is the time threshold used to define a residence. It puts a limit between visits and periods of residence. It is also arbitrary. In HDSS, the time limit varies between three months and six months. In migration analysis, however, the time limit is usually six months. One guiding principle is that the time criterion taken on the field for data collection should always be less than or at worst equal to the time criterion used for analysis. In other words, the precision in the data should always be superior to the precision for analysis. This is a guiding principle that holds for other analytical matters. The original variables should always be more precise than necessary for analyzing them. Another issue related to change of residence is that of internal moves within the study area. In an HDSS, people can change household. The definition of an internal move is a change of household within the study area and is identified by the exit event from the household of origin, EXT, and the entry event into the household of destination, ENT. The exit must precede the entry. Internal moves should not be mixed with migration that are defined as changes of residence involving crossing the study area boundaries. A migration out of the HDSS will be identified with OMG and an in-migration by IMG. Frequent changes of residence and circulation within the HDSS and between the HDSS and other places imply that the same people will actually appear at different points in time in different places. There is a high chance that they will be interviewed by different field workers. 
How will they know that the person has already been a resident before? They cannot rely on the respondent to tell them. Therefore, it is important to conduct what is called an individual identifier reconciliation. This means to reconcile the individual ID of a newcomer with an ID that potentially belongs to the same individual. This is necessary for an internal move when the same person change household, but also for external move when the same person return to the study area, possibly in a different household. Computer programs can help to establish the match on the basis of names, sex, age, matrimonial status, and possibly other characteristics. So, this is important to check if identifier reconciliation has been done systematically. Has it been done with the help of an efficient computer program? Has it been done for all individuals in the database? Until which round of data collection is the reconciliation valid? The individuals that have not yet gone through an identifier reconciliation procedure are called hanging cases in HDSS jargon. Are external migrations, that is after return migration, also reconciled the same way as the internal migrations? If not, the return migration will be seriously underestimated and the new in migrations overestimated. Data quality will determine the end of observation date, the OBE. This OBE will be the right censoring date for our analysis. This censoring date depends on the last reliable observation date. In particular, as we said in the previous slide, it depends on the extent of the identifier reconciliation. It is the date until which all hanging cases have been solved. The reliability of in and out migration data and therefore of the exposure time as a resident in the HDSS depends on this last reliable date. Usually, for convenience, we use a date between two rounds of data collection, preferably a 1st January or 1st July. All longitudinal sets of data that contain individual and household coviates should have the same end of observation date. In other words, the same OBE date should appear in all longitudinal modules. Wishing you a rich event history, many thanks for your kind attention.